If Jupiter fails to protect us from an extinction-level comet, is there anything we can do to protect ourselves? Don Yeomans is the manager of NASA's Near-Earth Object Program, the front line of Earth's defense. NASA has uh, started a Near-Earth Object Program. They started it back in 1998 in an effort to discover and catalog and trace the motions of all the near-Earth objects that could cause global disasters should they hit. Five observatories around the world and an army of astronomers search the skies 24 hours a day, hunting for comets and asteroids. It's what we call a low-probability, high-consequence event. So while they don't happen very often, thank heavens, uh, when they do happen, they're catastrophic. And so it, it makes sense to have some insurance against them. To find them, astronomers take multiple photographs of space over a period of time. A computer then scans the images and identifies anything that moves against the background of stars. Once it finds a moving object, the team can calculate its orbit to see if it threatens Earth. If one of these bodies is on a collision course, there are a number of proposals to deal with it. One popular method is to destroy it with a massive nuclear weapon. But if this fails, it could have disastrous consequences. If the debris is not completely pushed away from the Earth, not only do we have then the same amount of mass and energy falling on the Earth, but it's now radioactive in addition. So a very large nuclear explosion near one of these asteroids could conceivably make the problem worse, not better. Another idea is to build a spacecraft that can intercept the comet and use powerful extendable arms to steer it into a safer orbit. Or we could attach solar sails to a comet and harness the power of the sun to gently pull it away from a collision course. In the desert of Arizona, Jay Malosh has an even more ingenious idea. If we should find ourselves threatened by a comet, and if we know the orbit of the comet long enough ahead of time, all it takes is just a gentle push to keep it from colliding with the Earth. I'm going to demonstrate how this might be done on this object, a potato, that is about the same shape as uh, Comet Temple 1 or Borelli. And um, I'm going to use a solar collector, this hand lens, to concentrate the desert sun onto the surface of this. In reality, we wouldn't use a lens, we'd use a mirror, but this will work out here in the desert. As I concentrate the sunlight onto my model comet, you can see that we evaporate material from the surface of the, of the comet. The material burning off the comet by the solar collector creates a small jet of gas. The jet produces thrust, and over time, this pushes the comet away from its collision course. Scientists are developing solar collectors, but as yet, none are big enough to push a comet away from Earth. Every year, the Near-Earth Object Program finds hundreds of new bodies. The good news is none of them pose a threat to Earth in the next century. The bad news is comets are almost impossible to spot until it's too late. The problem with detecting a comet is that they're very black, blacker than charcoal, so they don't begin to show their cometary form until they're inside the orbit of Jupiter, well inside the orbit of Jupiter, and that's just a few months from the orbit of the Earth. Would Earth be ready to defend itself against a planet-killing comet in just three months? The answer so far is no. Yet the irony is that if it hadn't been for comets, there might not be life on Earth to defend. 